Now we're given two lines L1 and L2 and their respective vector equations. And what we've got to show is that they intersect at a point say A and find the position vector of this point where they intersect. So the position vector R then, if they're going to intersect at A, that would be our position vector it would be exactly the same for both of them. There'll be a value of lambda that you could put into here, a value of mu that you could put into here that would give exactly the same value for r, the same position vector, which would be this point a. So that's the, basically how we're going to start to work this out. We're going to say that at a, okay, assuming that they intersect, we've got that this vector will equal this vector. And we can group up the components. We can say we've got 6 minus lambda here, minus 1 lambda. So if we do that, we've got 6 minus lambda. Then here we've got minus 3 plus 2 lambda, minus 3 plus 2 lambda. And on the bottom here, the k component, we've got minus 2 plus 3 lambda. So minus 2 plus 3 lambda. We'll put that in as a column vector and this will be equal to the same or similar kind of results that we get when we expand this. We'll have minus 5 plus 2 mu, minus 5 plus 2 mu. Then for the j component, 15 minus 3 mu, 15 minus 3 mu. And lastly the k component, 3 plus 1 mu, 3 plus mu. And again, put that in as a column vector. Now when you get to this stage, we need to take two equations. We look at either the i, j or k components, whatever's easiest. And when I look at this equation here, I can see that if we take the i components, I like the i components purely because I've got one lambda here. And I'm going to take the k components as well because I've got one mu here. But this is totally up to you. You can, as long as you take a pair of equations, okay, we're going to solve them simultaneously. And then we're going to check out whether our results that we find for lambda and mu work in the equation that we didn't use. All right, so I'm going to look at the i and j components for this. And I would strongly suggest that you try other versions, okay? So if I compare the i components, we've got 6 minus lambda equals minus 5 plus 2 mu. And if I make lambda the subject from this one, I'm going to get that therefore lambda equals, if I add lambda to the right hand side, and if I add 5 to both sides, I'm going to get 6 plus 5, which is 11, and then subtract the 2 mu, I'm going to get minus 2 mu. So there's one equation, let's call it 1. I need another equation, and I'm going to go for the k components there, okay? So if we just say compare the k's, what do we get for this? Well, we get minus 2 plus 3 lambda, minus 2 plus 3 lambda, and that equals 3 plus mu. And for this one, I'm going to make mu the subject by subtracting 3 from both sides. So, therefore, I've got mu equals 3 lambda, and then I've got minus 2 minus another 3, which is minus 5. So that's my second equation. And what I can do now is substitute, we'll just write it down here, substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So what do we get? Well, we'll have mu equals 3 times lambda, 3 times 11 minus 2 mu, minus that 5. Well, let's just come down here. If we multiply it out, we end up with mu equaling 33 minus 6 mu minus 5. So if I add 
6 mu to both sides we get 7 mu equals 33 take away 5 so that's 28 and if I divide both sides by 7 I'm going to get that therefore mu equals 4. Now I can substitute mu equals 4 back into equation 1 and it will give me lambda so if I just say sub in equation 1 we get that lambda equals 11 minus 2 lots of 4 11 minus 8 so that gives us lambda equals 3 okay now that I've got two values for uh, my lambda and mu I need to check out to see whether this works in the equation that I didn't use here so that's going to be for me anyway the J components this middle one here so what I'm going to do is compare the J components so it's going to be a bit crammed here but if we compare the J components then the equation will be minus 3 plus 2 lambda minus 3 plus 2 lambda equals 15 minus 3 mu And what I want to do now is just substitute either mu equals 4 or lambda equals 3, not both of them, okay, into this equation, just one of them. Because you never know if we might have made a mistake here, or I've made a mistake, and we put it into here with both of these, we might find that we've got a different answer on this side to what we've got on here, and it's not going to look good. So just put in one of these values and check to see whether, say, mu turns out to equal 4. So let's say if we substitute lambda equals 3 into that equation, see what mu turns out to be. When lambda equals 3, we therefore have minus 3 plus 2 times 3, which is 6, equals 15 minus 3 mu. So therefore, 3 mu, if I add it to both sides, this side is 3, take it away from 15 gives me 12. So you can see if I divide both sides by 3, mu turns out to equal 4. So we've got exactly the same value there, so therefore it's consistent with what we've got here. So we know therefore the lines do intersect. So what I'm going to do is say that therefore they intersect because I've got the same value of mu and I'm going to sub lambda equals 3 into equation for L1 and this will give me the position vector of A. So when I substitute lambda equals 3 okay we get the position vector R of A okay equals well this part here actually is the value for um, R in general for any point on L1. So when lambda equals 3, you can see we get 6 minus 3, which is 3. We get minus 3 plus 6, which is also 3. And then minus 2 plus 3 times 3, that's 9. Minus 2 plus 9 is 7. So the position vector of A is going to be 3. 3, 7, just about squeezed it in there. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea then about that first part.